Peace, 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 family. Welcome back to another Saturday book review. Um, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everybody has been tuning in. I appreciate all the comments I've been getting down in the comment section. I want to shout out my man, Marvin Cook. Got a reading uh, on Saturday. It was really exciting. It went really well. So I just want to shout out my man, Marvin Cook, from Detroit, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? Came and got a reading from you, boy. I appreciate him for that. Okay, let's get right on into the video. My name is Michael Jordan, a.k.a. The Serious Alchemist. Today's video, today's book review, I should say, um, is uh, Esoteric Egypt. Esoteric Egypt, the sacred science of the land of Kim. And that's why I pur purposely bought this book and, and delve into this one because you don't hear a lot of uh, Egyptologists calling Egypt Kim. You know what I'm saying? They usually call it Egypt, which is a Greek word. Kim is an ancient uh, comedic word. You see what I'm saying? So that's one of the first reasons why I got this book. And what's in it is just, man, this baby's a jewel. And this is going to give you the esoteric side of things. This is giving you esoteric Egypt, not the exoteric, but the esoteric, the hidden and the inner. You know what I'm saying? So this is by J.S. Gordon, as y'all can see. And I'm going to start out and uh, read from the back of the book like I always do. Um, More than anyone else I've known, John Gordon shows a deep insight into the esoteric mindset of the ancient Egyptians. I fully recommend this book to all who want to understand and relate to ancient Egypt's spiritual message. See, a lot of us, when we look at Egypt, we looking for the, you know, the religious and, and, and physical side of it. A lot of us never really look to, I ain't gonna say a lot of us, but some of us, you know, uh, cause I know some of us are looking to the esoteric side, but I'm saying, I know there's a lot of us out here that haven't delved into it yet. But a lot of us, when we first, you know, find out that we are the ancient Egyptians and that, you know, the ancient Egyptians was black and, and all that, you know, you begin to understand and you want to find out more about the ancient Egyptians, right? And when you do, we start to look at the physical side, the esoteric side, the statues, you know, the beautiful statues, the pyramids, the monuments and all that, you know, the sacred sites but we never really think about the esoteric or the hidden meaning or the occult meaning that's being presented in ancient Egypt. And that's what this book provides, family. It provides that inner occult meaning, you know what I'm saying, that may be missing from your studies. But let me finish reading from the back. In Esoteric Egypt, J.S. Gordon reveals how the sacred science and wisdom tradition of ancient Egypt, the land of Kim, stems from an advanced prehistoric worldwide civilization, examining the metaphysical structure of our universe as seen by the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Celts, which were all black, by the way. The originals was all black. Everything on the planet was all black at one time. So let's get that straight. I'm not taking away from none of the other races, but I got to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? I got to kick the truth. And that could be backed up you know what I'm saying? You can look that up for yourself. You know what I'm saying? There's receipts out there on that. So let me finish here. Um, he shows, um, let's see, the metaphysical structure of our universe as seen by the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Celts. He shows that each tradition is merely a variation on the central concepts of the procession of the equinoxes and the obliquity of the ecliptic pole. He explores the connections be between the cyclical movements of Orion and Sirius and the story of Osiris and Isis, the importance of the Pleiades and the circumpolar stars, and the ancient tradition of man as a divine being. Now, I got to stop right there for a second, family. The ancient tradition of man as a divine being. Now, you are divine. Man, we divine. The man is divine. But in this human state, in this meat suit, once you get in this meat suit, sometimes it's hard to see the divinity. It's hard to recognize the divinity because we down in this meat suit. But once you start studying and start searching for truth, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, 
you become to realize there is a divine part of you. There's something in you that is very divine. And that's what these books lead us to, the divine within. But let me continue. Born from the substance of the stars, he investigates the people who colonized greater Egypt 100,000 years ago. The progenitors of ancient Egyptian civilization descended from the fourth and fifth root race Atlanteans. Gordon explores the magical and esoteric meanings behind Egyptian sacred ritual and temple art, drawing parallels to the mystery school process of initiation, explaining the fundamental unity of the Egyptian pantheon and the structure of the after death state. He shows that the Egyptians clearly believed in reincarnation and a spiritual evolutionary process, revealing the ancient sacred science of the land of Kim, teachings passed down from the earliest times. He examines the psycho-spiritual nature of the human being and the function of our spiritual identity and our soul. Woo, that was powerful. And me, I love knowledge, man. I, I, I just love knowledge. This is me. This is everything in me. Is about knowledge, studying, and knowing. Like I always say, family, everything ain't in books, but it's a good start. It's a damn good start. You feel me? And then once you get to a certain level, it's levels this thing. You you ain't gonna need no books no more. You know what I'm saying? You are. You'll find out you are the book. But I'm telling you, family, you can't go wrong with books. Don't let nobody tell you wrong. And I hear a lot of people saying you're getting the author's opinion. It, it depends on what kind of books you're getting. If you're getting books on uh, spiritual sciences. You getting sciences, you getting spiritual sciences. You know what I'm saying? You you ain't getting the author's opinion. You getting the actual science. So remember that, and especially and especially when you're dealing with scholarship. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, the book of uh, the, the the hero. I think it's a hero with a thousand faces that came out of the University of Chicago. That's a serious book. So people just saying that you know don't pay attention to that. Get the book for yourself and read for yourself. So, um, you know, don't believe what I got to say. Get the book and let the book do the explaining. You know what I'm saying? And then when you do the research, that's when you get the receipt. That's when you get the understanding and the understanding. Okay, let me tell you about the author, J.S. Gordon, born 1946, died 20, made the transition, excuse me, uh, 2013. Held a master's degree in Western esotericism from the University of Exeter and was a senior fellow of the Theosophical Society of England where he lectured on ancient history and metaphysics. Known for his in-depth knowledge of the ancient Egyptian mystical tradition, he wrote several books, including The Path of Initiation and Land of the Fallen Star Gods. And Land of the Fallen Star Gods by J.S. Gordon is another good book, family. Get that one as well. To get your hands on that one. Get that one too. So as I always do, family, I'm going to go inside and read a little piece from here. You know what I'm saying? Hoping it intrigues something and somebody out there to go get the book and do the study and the research for themselves, you know, because I think that's a problem over here in the West. So many times we depend on other people to give us, you know, their opinion of what something is. When you can find out for yourself, family, all you got to do is know how to read. You know what I'm saying? If you know how to read, that's shit. You, you, you halfway, you more than halfway there. You feel me? So that's why I say these, these books is important, family. And again, this is Esoteric Egypt. I'm going to put it up there clearly so the family can see it because I want the family to get this. The Sacred Science of the Land of Kim by J.S. Gordon. And let me read this little piece in here. I got a little piece of paper here marking this piece because I think this is very profound. And this is on page 27. And it's the Constitution of a Star Sun. Right? The Constitution of a Star Sun is what it is. I don't know if y'all can see that on page 27. The Constitution of a Star Sun. All right. Okay. To begin with, then scholars over the centuries have very successfully managed to serially to serially misunderstand the nature of the sun, itself a star. As the ancients saw it, for to the ancients, the physical sun was but a secondary sun. See, family, a lot of people don't know this. This sun out here. There's another sun behind the sun 10 times the size of this one. And it's called Sirius. Right? So that's what they drop in here. 
The physical sun that you see is a secondary sun. There's a sun behind the sun that we get that energy from that sun coming through this sun here to planet Earth, or I should say daughter Earth, and it's not mother Earth, it's daughter Earth. The fallen daughter, when you deal with the Kabbalah spiritual system, is daughter Earth. So remember, that's not mother Earth, it's daughter Earth. So the true sun, according to them, the home of the local Demiurge, was a crystal sphere containing our whole solar system, which discriminatingly absorbs within itself the invisible yet ambient light of the stars surrounding it in space and refracts it inward. Now, this crystal sphere contained, in their view, an invisible outer aether, a literal ring of cold fire, which bears a very striking resemblance to the invisible electrified outermost atmosphere, the ionosphere, surrounding our Earth, surrounding our surrounding daughter Earth, which is our sister. She's our sister. She ain't our mother, right? Feel me on this. Just follow me for a second. As Robert Temple tells us in his book, The Crystal Sun, Philolaeus, the Pythagorean, a noted writer on the same subject, was reported by a number of early commentators in Greek and Roman times as holding that the sun was triple. For example, he quotes, Achilles Tateus, circa 3rd century CE, as writing, Philaeus says that the sun receives its fiery and renated nature from above from the ethereal fire and transmits the beams to us through certain pores. So that according to him, the sun is triple. One sun being the arti one sun being the ethereal fire, the second that which is transmitted from it to the glassy thing under it, which is called sun. And the third that which is transmitted from the sun in the sense to us. Some modern commentators have taken the view from this that the crystal sun and its aether referred to the surface of the physical sun and that the ancients considered there to be a glassy counterpart beneath this. That is at the very core of the sun. But this is manifestly now what the Py Pythagoreans were talking about. So basically they saying that this sun, physical sun that we see out here every day is just a magnifying glass for the greater sun that's behind it, family. Now think about that for a second. It makes mad sense. And I know it makes sense because I've studied this for a while. But for those who haven't, it may seem a little, you know, it may seem a little out there. You feel me? To some of y'all who ain't heard this before. But it's real. Just do your study. Do your research. That'll tell you everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm always searching for the truth. And I don't care where it comes from. I don't care what color you are. If it's the truth, it's the truth. If you pink and you're kicking the truth, I'm with you. If you're yellow and you're kicking the truth, I'm with you. You know, it, it don't matter to me. Truth is truth, like I always say. Okay, let me finish reading this little bit right here, family. Then, then I'll be done with this little piece. It is iterating to note from this quotation of Philo Philolaeus that the ancients were aware of the porous nature of the solar surface. When modern scientific theory would suggest that such a perception would have been impossible without the sort of sophisticated equipment scientists themselves use so family that's saying that how the hell did we know this without all this so-called equipment that these people that these scientists possess today how did our ancestors know because it was within us already we understood as above so below as within so without we understood those principles we had knowledge wisdom and understanding and understanding we had that feel me? So let me continue. It says, however, we find the same perception as a feature incorporated into the Mayan legend of the birth of the fifth solar cycle. Here to begin with, the cosmic gods are depicted as being uncertain as to who among them would take on the role of the next sun. The S-U-N, mind you, that's sun S-U-N as the job involved a necessary self-immolation. Eventually, two gods put themselves forward, one, Nana Hazen, remaining at the edge of the sacred fire, burning slowly, while the other, Tetsikatl, a lowlier god with a pockmarked face, jumped courageously straight into the central flame. 
then once these two aspects of the demiurge had thus committed themselves, the great solar deity Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, manifested himself in order to further the evolution of man. The Pythagorean concept itself appears to have been learned either from the Egyptians during Pythagoras' 22-year sojourn as a student at the Sacred College of Heliopolis. But I'm going to let y'all on a little secret. Pythagoras is, is Pythagorean is no, no other than Ptah Osiris, Ptah and Osiris. That's all that is. Family. Pythagoras was never a person, no physical person. That's Ptah Osiris. But anyway, let's go on. During an equivalent stay of his in Babylonia, but the Mayan tradition told in this style of mythic allegory says fundamentally the same thing. And it also indicates that at some time or another, this highly advanced knowledge was held by cultures in common right across the world. From it was derived the universally held soul principle, which applied to all cosmic, sidereal, and terrestrial organisms. And because knowledge was held to be necessarily cyclical in operation in nature, it automatically followed that astrology as a science was fundamental to any possible clear understanding of the rationale behind the whole cosmic process. So family, if you really want to understand what's going on in this world, you have to get to the origin of everything. We have to get to the origin of everything. If you study in Christianity, go to the origin of it because it has an origin. If you study in Islam, go to the origin of it because it has a whole origin. If you study in Judaism, you know what I'm saying? Go to the origin of it because it has an origin and it also has a counterpart, a spiritual counterpart. And I'm going to tell you the spiritual counterpart to Christianity is Gnosticism. The spiritual counterpart to Islam is Sufism. The spiritual counterpart to Jodaism is Kabbalah. You feel me? So once you understand that, you're on your way to doing some great things. But you know what I'm saying? I'm going to end this video again. The book, Esoteric Egypt, great book to have in your library if you want to understand some things. The Sacred Science of the Land of Kim, J.S. Gordon. My name is Michael Jordan, a.k.a. The Serious Alchemist. I'm out. Peace. But hold on a second. If you like a video, I mean, if you like a reading from me, I'm going to leave my email in the description box. Hit me up. And I'm the Michael Jordan, the Serious Alchemist. Peace. See you in the next video.